I was going to say that I think for younger children, when I tell them, okay, this this item costs ten dollars, they don't understand what ten dollars means. So I say, okay, if you buy this item, if or rather if you don't buy this item, you could actually buy three packets of chicken rice. You know, so creating that kind of comparison, because they, they know that oh, you know, chicken rice is a meal for them, and and so rather than than tell them that oh, this this item is because I could actually feed myself three meals with the same amount of money. So I think for what what I've tried to do with younger children is to put it in terms that they kind of understand or to equate it with a certain good that they're familiar with. We work hard for it. It affects nearly every aspect of our lives. We use it every day and think little of it until it runs low. Then we worry. I'm talking about money. You're listening to the WADT Podcast and this week we are starting a new series called Hot Potatoes where we discuss difficult situations parents face with their children and provide some practical tips on how to handle them. If there is a hot potato that you would like us to touch on, do let us know through our social media platforms and email. My co-hosts today are Hafiz, Kevin and introducing... Shufen. Shufen is a stay-at-home mom with five children who are between the ages of five and ten. And we will be talking about how parents can educate their children about money, its values, its purpose, how to spend, how to save, and how to share. Good morning to all of you and most of all, welcome to you, Shufen. Hi, thanks for having me. Hi, everyone. It's good to have you, Shufen, because you are a young mum with young children. So I think uh, that's exactly what we want, a different perspective from a younger parent uh, who is uh, trying to raise children in this present modern day or some say postmodern society. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'm sure you have lots of input to share with us, your experience and maybe some of the lessons you have learned from you know raising five kids, young kids in, in this uh, environment. So we are looking for it, forward to that. Yeah. So today we are talking about money and um, let, let's kick off with this question. What is the right age to start teaching children about money? What do you think? Um, Kevin, let's start with you. Uh, well, I think money is a, is a math kind of thing, right? It's counting. So I think as early as when the kids can count, uh, we can introduce the concept of money. Uh, for example, if we are going to uh, buy something off the shelf or off the counter, when, when the kids are watching us pay, yeah, we, we can we have conversations about that as well. In fact, we can even ask, I mean, I remember when my kids were, were I, maybe we too young, but I would pass them the money and then ask them to pay to the auntie, you know, then they don't do one, do one kind of thing. Yeah, but it's just getting them get used to this whole concept of money and then how money can be exchanged for, for, for items. But that's how, I think, um, how early is when they can start counting. So that is like what? Um, maybe three, three four. four. I read three, yeah. four. Yeah. yeah okay, right. okay. Yeah. How about you, Shufan? When do you start teaching your kids about money? Yeah, I think similarly to Kevin, like when the children were three or four, because um, I bring them out with me to the markets often or to like NTUC. Um, so they do see me, you know, handing over the uncle or auntie something and they ask me like, oh, what's that? And I say, oh, that's money. You have to pay for what you are, you're going to take. Um, and so that's when they see, oh, okay, I give them some coins or I'll give them a dollar note. Um, so I think that's when the whole concept of uh, paying for something came in and then the use of money. Uh, so yeah, about three or four. Um, sometimes if they're a bit older, maybe like four and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Hafiz, I, I don't know if you re still remember the days where, you know, we were introduced about, you know, uh, in school where we have uh, the POSB, you know, savings account and we learn to save money. Um, that was a time that uh, I, I clearly remember really learning about money. I don't know about you. When did you start learning about money? <laughs> I can't remember. It was a long time ago. <laughs> but I remember uh, we used to have this, uh, you know, discipline of uh, having uh, like a piggy bank, you know, putting uh -huh. coins inside uh, boxes. Uh, and, you know, it's like uh, anything for everyone. 
you know, in the family or friends, yeah. So I can't remember how young was I, but I, I agree that it's never too young to teach our kids about money. Two, three years old. I mean, when they understand, uh, you know, the relationship between uh, things, yeah, all right, uh, and also people. So I think it's, it's not just the teaching about there's value in money, but about uh, social uh, relationship. You know, when the exchanges that happen, you know, and so on. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to say that, Hafiz, that uh, I remember um, learning about money when I was young. Well, the, or the first concept of money when I was learning when I was young was about saving. So um, my parents would give me pocket money, but they always say uh, when when you have extra, just put it in, in, your, in your piggy bank or your savings bank. Yeah. So that's where I started. I may not learn the value of money yet, but I, I learned the fun, first concept of money is saving, to, to save it. Yeah, I think saving is an important thing, right? Because... Uh... Singaporeans are known to be asset rich, but cash poor. <laughs> so I think saving money, I mean, you know, they, like they say, cash is king, right? Uh, so what if you have a condo, right? But uh, the 2018 recession, for example, taught us a lesson that uh, I know many people who live in condo, but when that recession hit, you know, they were in deep trouble, all right? They couldn't last two months. Uh, and they couldn't sell the condo in time to, to kind of liquidate it and get cash. So cash is still king. So how do we teach kids to save? What do you, what do you think are some ideas and some methods that has worked for you? I think when it comes to savings, um, I mean, my children are still young. The eldest is only 10. Um, and so I have three primary school going children, which means the three of them may get like an allowance uh, every week when you go to school. Um, and so we'll tell them, okay, you know, you have uh, $10 a week. And so we want to encourage you to save at least one-tenth of it. So it should be a dollar. So we do ask them to put aside the dollar at the start of the week so that they know, okay, I have $9 left to play for the week and not to, you know, spend, spend, spend the whole week and then see what else I have left and then I save it. But I think we, we tell them, okay, you know, from the very beginning, save it first so that you know you, you have already put that aside. Um, and then at the end of the week, if you have even more to save, great. But if you have not, at least you know you have something that you've set aside already. Um, and I, I think that's something that uh, is, is a good start for them, just to put aside money first when it first comes in, rather than wait until the very end to work with the very little or none that they may have or even like be in debt. <laughs> Because sometimes they just go to the canteen and they just buy and buy and buy because you know, oh I just pay the uncle auntie something, I get my I get my drink, I get my chicken rice, and then at the end of the day, oh mommy, I have no more money. Um I'm like, where you go to? You know, it's just spend and spend, especially um my primary one. He's very new to school, so he's only been in school for like three months. Um there's one day he told me, Oh, I spent two dollars fifty cents. I said, but I only give you two dollars a day. Like where did the extra fifty cents come from? So somehow I think from the, the day before, uh, the day after. He, yeah, correct, correct. So he, I think he, he just kept it like from the I don't know the pre previous week or the day before, and he didn't take it out of his wallet, so it was still there. But I said, okay, you know, but you have to learn that you can't be overspending, um, and and spending what you technically would not have on a regular day. So I think it's been an oh, so interesting journey with that one. So you're drawing on either drawing on his savings or living on credit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that's a good that's a good concept to teach. And and only recently now, right, in my 40s, I listened to podcasts. I learned of this whole budgeting of of of, of our finances and money. Hmm. And the concept that Rachel Cruz, uh, Crux was, was Rachel Cruz was teaching was that whatever money you have, your income, right? The first thing you do to budget, right, is to budget. Uh, your savings, like what Shuba is saying, but she said the second item on your budget list is how much you're giving away. Then the then the rest of it you budget for food for blah, blah, blah. so that wow the second item after savings is how much you're giving away, because she she believes in the principle that your money is also can use to use to bless others as well. So, yeah, so that's a second item on the list. You know how much you're giving away. So, that, wow, that's a that's a good uh, principle to have, which I want which I like, to teach to my kids. Uh, it reminds me of uh, the term delayed gratification, right? And uh, there's a way to teach children, I mean, uh, about delayed gratification that you can get uh, rewarded for delaying, uh, you know, enjoyment, <laughs> uh, short-term enjoyment, and you get a long-term uh, enjoyment and, and reward. So I think, um, how do we teach that? 
you know to our children mm. i think what's yeah been, mm. sorry i was going to say about something new that's happening in schools um is that now they are introducing like a posb smart watch where you can actually pay with your watch and you just tap it at like oh my god install. And so, because we got a, no a notification to sign up for them, so basically you link this watch to your bank account and then you just pay like with your watch. And um, I, I didn't get it for the children, definitely not. Um, and, and I think when my children asked me for it, I said the whole reason was because that is going to be the biggest pitfall and trap of you just spending money without you even knowing it because, you know, it is cashless. Um, mm. which which the whole nation is going towards now, right? You can just tap and pay, tap and pay, tap and pay. Um, but if the children don't actually handle money, they don't physically touch it, they, they don't realise that there is something that you have to give in order to receive something. Um, and so just, just tapping things, you know, I was like, wow. Uh, I think the children are a bit too young to, to deal with that. And so when they started primary school, I, I mean, there was a new initiative and, and that's something that I was okay. I, I think I'm going to hold off that for a bit, uh, get them to really understand what money is, you know, and, and uh, the whole allowance and savings. So yeah, that was something new for me as well. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, because when the kids don't see the money, they... Hmm. they they don't really count. Yeah. So when we go for supermarketing, I mean, I want the points, right? So I will use credit card. So they just take my card and just teet, just teet, teet, you know, like this is, is money, you know? Yeah. But there's one thing I was very surprised when I went to pump petrol and you know, now petrol prices have, like, have gone skyrocketed, right? Yeah. So my, my kids, they, when they saw the meter, then when the final amount was like, wow, Papa, $102 for petrol. Ah. You pay so much for petrol. Ah. Yeah. So I had a conversation with my girl. She said, yeah, you see, that's why I'm asking you to take MRT. But then she it's like a light bulb they go on like, oh. <laughs> and yeah, them. yeah this is about telling i mean teaching kids our kids uh, that money doesn't come easily right I and mean, that's one second is i think i remember she even mentioning about debt you know so mm. i have this experience with my children all of them all right so i do the same thing i give them a weekly allowance up when they are of a certain age and then if they do not keep to that discipline they don't have money and a uh, few of them did this they borrow money from their friend and uh, when they tell me i tell them uh, what 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 do you do that you know because uh, i don't have any more money what do you ask from me <laughs> you know then they, they thought that i'll punish them or anything so but mm. when i when they take that right i mean first i will tell them there's nothing wrong with that okay but i mean you have to pay back right to them but don't make it a habit because one that's happened you think the money comes easily right and the fact they have to pay it and today when you're an adult, especially when you pay back money, there's interest, compounded interest, and it worsens your situation into helping you. So for that little enjoyment that you want, you will suffer a long time. It's something that I would tell the my kids from young that don't do that, don't fall into the trap. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think that that's a very good point. Yes, you know about money coming easily. Oh, you know the. Uh, I, I remember a joke. Well, it was a real story, but you know, it was funny. People share it as a joke that, you know, uh, children think that money comes out of the wall. You know why? Because of ATM. ATM. <laughs> Parents going to a wall and, you know, just knocking it somehow, knocking it, doing something, and then money comes out. Wow, money comes out from the wall. So th this kind of thing. So, I mean, we, we want to be thankful for modern technology, but on, on the flip side of it is that, you know, we do not know what it puts into the minds of children and how they begin to perceive money. Yeah. So I think going back to your smartwatch uh, thing, um, I think that's a very slippery slope, you know? Yes, you know, because there's no very difficult for young children to monitor and, you know, track their spending, right? And becomes so easy, right? Even for adults, you know, many adults have difficulty monitoring and keeping track of their spending. And as a result, they just overspend because of credit cards. And, and today with PayWave, it's even easier, right? And you just tap and go. Um, so I think that then giving them cash is still the best so that they can actually see it. And every time they want to pay for something, they will actually be able to look at how much they have, whether in their purse, their wallet, their pouch, or whatever it is, you know, and be more mindful and aware and, and maybe uh, conscious of it that oh it's getting lesser and lesser <laughs> and hopefully that bites them uh the the furthest i would go is a cash card with a limited amount of money 
for a week, for example. Okay, so let's say if the schools all go cashless, right? You know, no, the top shop store holders no longer accepts cash. Okay, we go cashless. So I'll give my child a cash card or the school needs to, you know, it, it's like some hawker centers here in, in near my place, they're, you, they're all using cash card and you get 10% discount for every purchase. Uh, so I think that's still, you know, there's a limit. So when, when your child goes and taps on, you know, and wants to buy something and oh, no more money, that's it, you've overspent, you know. I think that still helps the child to, you know, learn some restraint, <laughs> you know, and set some boundaries, you know, and, and uh, boundaries are not just words, you know, don't spend more than $10. Well, if it's just words, mm -hmm. what do you think the chances of him spending more than $10? <laughs> right. I think... Go ahead, bud. Sorry, I was going to say that I think for younger children, when I tell them, okay, this this item costs $10. They don't understand what $10 means. So I say, okay, if you buy this item, if or rather if you don't buy this item, you could actually buy three packets of chicken rice. You know, so creating that kind of comparison, because they, they know that, oh, you know, chicken rice is a meal for them. And and so rather than, than tell them that, oh, this, this item is going to be, I could actually feed myself three meals with the same amount of money. So I think for what, what I've, tried to do with younger children is to put it in terms that they kind of understand or to equate it with a certain good that they're familiar with um like mcdonald's meals or something you know that's, that's something that they would know okay i can eat i can buy one mcdonald's meal with like five dollars right, compared to just spend it all on 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 one on, on on one single item or something like that yeah sorry kevin back to you no i was going to uh, respond a little bit to what hafiz his, his question i think still left hanging now. how do you actually teach the children delayed gratification. I think one of the things that I, I taught my kids when I, uh, quite, when, I, when I can remember is about this whole concept of needs and wants. Do you need it now or do you want it? Yeah, do you, because if you need it, then I'll get it for you, lah, right? But if you want it, can deal with, can live without it, then then maybe you don't get it, lah, right? But then the, the concept of uh, mm -hmm. delayed gratification, right? I, I learned this somewhere that um, if you want this item, we wait, wait for it, wait, don't buy it first, wait three months or six months later. And after that period, do you still want it? You want it, then we buy it. Okay, so there's a wow. little, uh, uh, a way to six months. months. Yeah, because if you really wanted it after six months, you still desire it, then buy it. Lah, because you, you still want it six months later, you see? That's the idea, lah, right? But after six months, like, you by then. <laughs> Sorry? Or some, okay. so something then, new, a new model will have come up and replaced it. <laughs> yeah, then you do, then you didn't really need it in the first place, right? But if, like, let's say, limited stock only, if, if you don't buy it now, then no more already, for example, right? Then fine, I'll buy it for you first. Then later, if you want, because maybe I can't afford it, for example, right? Like the, the child can't afford this item. And, and it's a limited stock or, or the promotion is going to end soon, for example, right? Then as a parent, I can buy it first, but I don't give it to you. You 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 save up for it first or you you earn you earn enough for it first, then you pay it off for yourself, like, so to speak. So they don't actually just get what they want, but uh, I'm teaching them a uh, delayed gratification or you, you buy something that you can afford, things like that. Like. Yeah, related to that, uh, I think another way is a forced saving. You know, I do this. Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> it teaches me to be more disciplined, forcibly. So it's like I put my money somewhere that I cannot touch it. If I touch it earlier, I get I get the fine for it. You know, there's a penalty for it. So that's one way. Second, what, uh, what one way is to have some distractions. I think children, they are, I mean, like us also, we get attracted to things uh, quickly, even bad things. All right. So in that particular experiment i mean there is a this is called a marshmallow experiment right so they put this marshmallow you know in front of the kids you know and then uh you're supposed to have one each or what you know and then uh you know the, the adult went out you know see they they were told not to touch it you know uh, but if you don't touch it i'll reward you more later okay so what the kids did was to find distraction distracting thing you know so looking around and doing things you know so distraction is one way you know, <laughs> of teaching kids, uh, although it works, I think, in the short term, uh, uh, but teach them, for example, to even, uh, you know, exercise, I mean, move move about, you know, get your body moving and get this, don't be so uh, influenced by what you think uh, you want immediately, you know, then set the thinking brain moving, all right? So, you know, so distract children, I think, is one way. I think for me, it works always. 
No children who are crying, children who want something. <laughs> just distract them. If, if you are in a toy shop, how do you do that? <laughs> you bring the child to another part of the toy shop and look at a different toy, and then he says, I want that. <laughs> We are back to square one. <laughs> no, like the toy shop is the best. Toy shop say you can play anything you want here, but I just cannot buy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, right. all right. That's an idea. Variety. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> the whole variety is there for you, man. You might I can bring you back here again, no problem. But don't you buy. <laughs> I mean, the, that's the thing about the kids, right? Like, like all the Christmas presents are. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm notorious for that. Fanny and I are notorious for that. Okay, they, they get so many Christmas presents, right? But we don't show hand, you know. We they, they, they some that <laughs> my kids actually. In, complain uh, to their relatives or their friends like you know uh, mommy let me open my christmas present in april or in june <laughs> wow yeah because if you open everything uh, then they play uh, then they, they lose the the novelty thing you know but then when you open something for they unbox it for for one for first time uh, or wow, very new well they play very for a lot a, a lot a lot right so we space out the gifts uh. sometimes uh, we space out so much until the gift like too young for them really like that like, oh, yeah, yeah we are not giving the other people also yeah <laughs> You know, but anyway, yeah, one thing that uh, I don't know where you've got time to talk about this, but it's about how to teach our kids how to give. Because a lot of our conversation so far is about how to spend or how to save or how to be a good steal of money. But how 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 would you guys actually teach our kids to be the generous part, to actually be giving? Okay, any ideas? I would like to learn from you guys. Should we give second hands? Uh? <laughs> so, you know, whenever we do, you know, I mean, hand me downs, you know, we do spring cleaning, you know, now, now we have uh, carousel and everything. So, in fact, I stopped throwing things really. All right. And I tell my kids, okay, you have carousel account, right? Just put everything on there. And if you want anything, just give them a very good price. You know, even the low ball also just, I'd rather than you clear it, you know, put it at the rubbish bin. You make someone happy because that person need it or want it, you know, why not? <laughs> Yeah. Any other suggestions about how to teach your children to share, right? So we, we, we have spending, we have saving, and then we have sharing. So how, how do you teach children to share? I think that's where um, parents help to model it a lot. Um, in, our, in our house, sometimes uh, we have the rubbish collectors who come by and we give them drinks you know, uh, or if we have uh, workers who come in to do house renovations, um, we get the children to, hey, give them some drinks or offer some bread or biscuits. Um, and I remember there was once when um, my we walked by a, a busker um, and my daughter came up to me, oh, mommy, can we give the, the, the uncle some money? And I said, sure, you know, and so I give her some money and she went to, to put it in the, in, in the box. Um, and I think... And I asked him why. I said, why Why do you want to, to give the uncle money? He said, oh, I think just because he needs it. And, and I think it's it's simple things, um, acts of kindness um, that, that we can do, you know, as we model together as a family. Last time we would, uh, I would like bake cookies or, or brownies and we say, you know, just give it to our neighbours, you know, let's just um, bless them and, and share what we have with them. So it might not always necessarily be money, um, sometimes the opportunities for money comes when, uh, like Chinese New Year, um, the children in school, they, they have um, a little ang pao collection for, I think, um, some of the community hospitals, uh, the elder care foundations, and they say, oh, you know, can you uh, put aside some of your ang pao money? Um, to donate to the, the community, to the communities, and so and, and and that's what we do, you know. And we explain to children, you know, oh, this is this is what we're doing. We are we are giving this a, a, a bit of money to support them in the work that they do, to support the elderly or, um, or the homes that that this money will go to. Uh, and I I think these are are just small ways of getting them involved, uh, in how they can give and how they can share, be it be it money or their toys, um, uh. Yeah, just just various things that they mm -hmm. have around the house. Yeah. yeah speaking about giving, in fun, we have this, we have this friend, Baxter and Hafiz. We have this friend. Uh, she they actually taught their daughter. She was like, how old was how old was Maya? Maya, uh, five or six. Huh. They planted plants, uh, and then they she sold five, the plants. Huh? Yeah, and she raised eight thousand dollars, and the money was given to foreign workers. Yeah. yeah. 
so that was an amazing teaching moment for, for, mm. for us as adults or what we can do mm. to impress mm. our kids. So what, what you're talking about is like fundraising projects, right? Yeah. Like uh, yeah. in America, we, we hear about this, right? A lot of children, young little children, you know, uh, it's, it's a common thing in America for them to set up a lemonade stall. And so children will set up their own lemonade stall. Of course, the mother prepares the lemonade and they sell, you know, each cup a certain amount of money. And, you know, kids would have raised a thousand dollars or so for whatever, you know, uh, cause out there. So I think there are many, many creative ways uh, to do that. I think uh, I, I, I like what the Jewish people do. Um, the Jewish people are one of the most charitable people. And when it comes to money, they are very, very calculative. I don't know if you've met any Jews. Okay, I, I've known a few Jews in my life and I can see that they are very calculative and that's how they become rich. Right, um, but one of the things that about them is they are also very charitable, and because of this um, practice that they have in most Jewish families, um, because in the in Hebrew, okay, that that's the Jewish language, uh, the word for charity is actually also means righteousness. Okay, tzedakah. Tzedakah is the word for charity, which is also the word for righteousness. So to them, an act of charity is an act of righteousness. So you're, in that sense, scoring point with God. <laughs> so that's why they think, you know, charity very important. Um, and one of the practices, you know, I, I, I'm sure they still practice it today. And that is every family, they would have a glass bottle or maybe a metal tin in the family in somewhere very uh, uh, conspicuous, all right? And then every time, you know, let's say the father comes home, you know, he would put his hand into his pocket and take out all the small change in his pocket and put it into that jar or that tin. Okay, so every day they will just be depositing coins into it until it's full. All right, so every member of the family would do that. All right, whatever coin they have, whatever loose change they have, they'll, once they step into the house, they will just drop it into that jar or that tin. And once it's full, so it doesn't mean it's just once a month. As long as it's full, all right, as a family, they'll decide, okay, who should we give this to? So it could be a charity, it could be a, 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 a neighbor you need next door or something like that, all right? And so, yeah, it goes on and on and on and on. So the, the whole concept of helping others, um, it, it's ingrained, it's kind of, uh, yeah, it, you know, taught to the child and also modeled to the child uh, from day one. It is a great yeah. idea, man. I want to start that soon. In fact, I'm going to start it with my kids now. First one, we'll talk about very fast because you got so many kids. Yeah. But not all of them have money. The twin don't have yeah. money. <laughs> of course, the other way is when the child has a savings account, right? And um, if the child agrees, I think you can even, um, you know, set up a gyro deduction, you know, that will deduct a certain amount to a certain charity or something like that. Okay, that's that's other ways. So that one is more of a in on an individual basis that means all right if you if the child has some you know a savings account and he's learned how to budget so like what shufan says we, and i like it is that uh was it kevin you know the first thing you budget is your savings and then the second thing you budget is your uh giving you know and and so it's being deducted right okay and after that whatever is left you are free to spend it so uh, there are different ways you can um, begin to make giving or sharing a part of life. Hafiz, you're going to say something, Hafiz? Yeah, interesting. Uh, uh, Pakistan, you mentioned the word, yeah, the word sadaqa. Actually, sadaqa also is Arabic, so it means the same, you know, uh, to give and uh, because I think semantic languages, right, similar. Mm. And and I think uh, in in uh, uh, Islam, in the my religion, there are many times to give sadaqa or to give uh, to give it's not just money right even smile is a charity you know even if you teach <laughs> mm. people as charity so again you know it's about giving right if you don't have money you can give other things you can give service you can give things that you have your time so that, i mean we broaden the concept of uh, giving and sharing but going back to the how to teach our children for me whenever i uh, i get my children to buy things yeah, i always tell them okay you have a friend who you think you want to share something with you know then i will also get for her of him now, I thought it's very important because this is something that I learned. Nobody hates being gift, getting gifts. Everybody will love it to get free gifts. Who doesn't? So it's just to make someone happy, you know? So even if you, it seems that you lose something from there, but actually you will gain a lot from people's happiness. 
And I always think the children that these things will come back to you somehow and more will come back. And I think that's related to that, uh, you know, delayed gratification thing. You know, you, you can never know what good things will come to you when you give uh, to others, even how small. Yeah, yeah it's called is favor. Very, <laughs> sharing is a very intentional thing, like, I guess. So I, I we try to teach our, our kids to share. So I, I, I tell them it's a privilege for us to be able to share with somebody what we have. Right, so I remember one one instance where we, we were we have volunteered with our uh, with one of our kids uh, school to go and pick uh, trash at Mary G. Okay, and they were handing out tongs, the, the those tongs to pick. So we don't use our hands to pick. We use the tongs to pick, right? Uh, um, they were handing out. So, but Fanny said, just take one tong can really. I said, why? For three of us, they learn to share, you know. So just by having one tong each, right? They have to learn um, one tong each. Then they need to share. They just keep taking. Production rate very high, lah. More trash will be picked up. But we wanted, and this was a teaching opportunity for our kids, right? We purposely take one tong, and then say, "Hey, my turn, ah. Then, ah, then they have to, they have to give it to the other sibling to to use the tong, right? So from there, right, we actually taught them how to ask for your turn. Also, you cannot say, "Hey, or snatch out something." Yeah. So the person waiting to waiting for their turn had to be gracious to ask for, "Hey, is it my turn now? Can I have a try? Can I have a go?" So they're learning that, but the person also holding it have to learn. Okay, I hold quite long already I it's time to pass it on that kind of thing there's also a time where I put I I build it up when they are a bit older I intentionally so let's say Baxter, Hafiz and Shuba are my children right I purposely give Hafiz right five slices of apple and then for Baxter I give two Shuba give two purposely give one kid right more then like, oh how come you got more I said, oh, up to you now you want to eat all yourself you eat wrong but if you want to you can share so then it, I teach them the concept that sometimes I have I can share with others so then next time I give Baxter more I give the rest the rest less then the one with the more one, okay, what should I do? Now? Should I eat everything for myself or should I share it? So it's, it's, it's your choice. I'm not forcing you to share, but I give you the opportunity. Why? Because I taught you it's a privilege to share. So when you have it, you can share. Yeah. And I'm very, I'm very touched with sometimes my kid, the last is the last one. They give their last one. So they actually don't have, but they gave it to somebody else. And that, that really that really touched my heart like that my kids are learning that concept of giving and, and blessing other people as well. Well, that, that's, uh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I think it also teaches them that uh, without saying it, the world is unfair. <laughs> but you can make it fairer by sharing. I right? say it all the time, life, life is not fair. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last question before we go. Uh, and I think this is a question that many, many, if, if not all parents uh, are thinking about it and talking about it is, do you pay your kids to do household chores? <laughs> How is you ever do that? And why? No, no. <laughs> and why? Why not? I mean, it works, but I don't do it because okay. the day I feel that it is a responsibility of everyone because everyone needs the home. Everyone uses things at the home, and more importantly, even if you don't, you didn't create that mess, right? Uh, you can help other people. I mean, there must be a reason that person didn't wash the plates or didn't uh, clear the room. You know. Uh, for valid reason, yes, but if continuously like that, right, <laughs> cannot. Because for me, very simple, when it comes to uh, your own things, you clear. But if other people need help, you just help, you know. No, i I'd rather do it myself than paying them because I think it teaches them the wrong value of uh, of uh, responsibility. I don't mm -hmm. know about the others, it may be different. Good point. How about you, Shufan? Yeah, in my, house, in my house, I won't pay them either. I think it... Uh, uh, similarly to Hafiz, you know, just teaching them about responsibility in the house. But I think also, I don't want the children growing up to think that uh, they should expect something in return all the time for what they do. Um, and I think that's something that they should learn younger than older. Um, there's a there's a very, uh, I always tell the children, you know, to do to others what you want others to do to you. And so if you want to have a nice clean house, a tidy house, um for for yourself then you should also do it for other people so that they can model it for you um and so i i don't want them to say okay you know you make your bed and i'll give you like 10 cents or if you put your cup back into the sink i'll give you 10 cents that I, it's, then i would create that uh that uh mentality that oh you know if i do something good i will definitely have something back in return um, but that's not the way the world goes, you know. You don't always do something good and get something back in return. I think it's the whole concept of uh, it's more, it's, it's really is more blessed to give than to receive. And I think just that to create that culture of giving um, and 
while today we, we talk a lot about money, um, as, they, as the children grow up, it's not just about a money asset that they have to deal with. You know, everybody, all of us have resources. We have our time, we have energy, we have our money. Um, and how we choose to save or spend or use all these things um, will be very important for them. And so, you know, I just wanted to grow up to know that, um, yeah, you shouldn't always be doing something, expecting something else in return because you just do it out of the goodness of your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Some parents would say, you know, that's um, a motivation, right? An incentive or a reward to get them to do it more consistently. But I think, yeah, the, the backside of it is that you're, you're teaching them, you're helping them develop a habit of relying on extrinsic motivation than intrinsic motivation and doing something, you know, because it's right, it's a good thing to do and let that be your only motivation. How about you, uh, Kevin? What, what's your opinion about it, paying kids yeah. to do household so chores? I do, I do pay them. Okay, but okay, but oh, okay, let me qualify first before we finish. Or I okay, don't do the wrong note. Huh? We differentiate. Okay, house chores is house chores. Errands are errands. It's different. Okay, house chores. You need to clear your. You need to bring your plate to the back of the sink after after meals. That one is a given. I'm not going to pay you for that. Okay, make your bed when you wake up is a given. You have to do that. Okay, fold your clothes. You know, I, you know, I can wash them in the washing machine. But if I put it there, I'll ask you to go and fold. You don't go and you don't go and make noise or And I'm not going to pay you for folding your clothes. Okay, so house chores is house chores. Those are disciplines and, and habits that we want them to inculcate. So I'm not going to pay you for that. But what I do pay them is, can you help me vacuum the car, please? Can you wash? Let's wash the car together. Those those kids who want to wash the car with me, you get paid. If you don't want to wash, you don't you don't wash out. It's okay. I'm not forcing you. But you don't get paid. Though. So errands, yes, things that is out of the ordinary that they are not supposed to do one, but they can do if they want to. So they have a choice. So they don't do they don't want to wash car. They don't they don't want to 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 to, to do that errand. Then they don't get paid. Lah. So it's a, and they have a choice. Yeah. So and if they do. Then they get rewarded so that's how i differentiate so interestingly all my kids not because they get paid but they like to wash car so they just all wash they car together them. so one will wipe the rim one will wipe the side window one will, yeah, things like, so oh they like to splash water and play yeah and yeah. then all get paid so yeah that's how i differentiate like chores and errands yeah and, and so how much do you pay them uh usually just two dollars yeah cheap labor la. yeah Oh, if if very high, I would like to wash a car for you. <laughs> no lah, anyway, I hope it's you cheap la. labor. Ah. It's, Bang, it's cheaper than the car wash, so yeah. it's not cheap labor. Yeah, yeah. my rate is two dollars per square inch. It's more more token <laughs> la, token. La. Yeah. Then then Parkson will leave it. Yeah, I think that's all right. Forever dirty lah. Yeah, yeah. Your car will be dirty lah. That's all. Just accept the fact. <laughs> that's why I don't have a car. <laughs> so that's no, why I'm not right. Wrong, guys. So example, Charles and Aaron. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Pas- Pastor talk about calculative, right? I mean, I mean, calculative and calculation. No one thing to teach children that whenever you do work, you know, then you get rewarded. You know, also there's another way of, of looking at it, lah. You know, uh, with work, then you get rewarded. So I think there is always a situation and context for that, and we need to explain to them. I think that's more important. Yeah. All right. Wow, this is a very interesting conversation. I think we have covered nearly all the bases. Uh, for you who are listening in, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask using our social media platforms or send us an email. We would be happy to talk to you and try to answer your questions. So until the next time, goodbye. Bye. 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 This is the WADT podcast and thank you for listening. If you have enjoyed today's episode, be sure to like, follow or subscribe so that you will not miss any episodes. Share the link to this episode with someone you think that will benefit from it. We want to know what you think of this episode too. Please feel free to share your comments on one of our social media platforms. We are on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. You can also email wearedeads2 at gmail.com if you have a question or need help. Till next time, this is Hafiz and Paxson signing off.